Okay, so what are we discussing today? Okay, so boom, it's like this. Do you see this? Okay. This is my list. This is my list, and this is my plan. Okay, so $10,000 in savings by January 1st of 2024. Lose 75 pounds by February 1st. Establish my nonprofit by February 3rd. Start juicing every day for myself, my mom, and my neighbor next door by February 10th. Create an eating plan for my dog because he keeps throwing up, and that needs to be done by March 2nd. Uh. Plan two out-of-the-country trips by March 8th. Try five new restaurants in the city by the end of the week. Plan my best friend's baby shower. Win a Nobel Peace Prize. Get my doctorate. Lose another 50 pounds by March 31st. Only eat foods that are green this year because that's a thing. Have all of my kids in bed by 6 p.m. And go on date night with my husband every week. I mean, that's not too much to ask. And so how does that make you feel? It makes me feel like a failure. Like, why can't I get all of this stuff done? I don't understand. Like, it's a very short list. It's not a lot. You know, like, Tamara, I don't I'm understand why right I can't there. do this. Like, right I should there. be able to do this. Have you considered that maybe you're doing a little too much? Have you considered giving yourself a little grace in that area? Huh? Grace? What's that? What's grace? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Tam here with Laugh and Grow with Tam. And on my channel, I help you grow with real talk and a side of laughter. Okay, y'all, so I've been really consistent on my content here lately and um, I gotta stick to it whether I got the baby with me or not. So he's here with me because daddy is at work in an important meeting and I'm still going back to work part-time, so I'm home. Baby boy is with me, so y'all, we in for a ride. I don't know how he's going to act during this video, so we're just going to see. But thank you all for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the skit at the beginning of this video. I really wanted to talk about this topic because one of the things that I have found that I struggle with is giving myself grace. And I struggle with this. Did he drop his passport? I struggle with this in so many areas of my life and I think a lot of times we set these unrealistic expectations for ourselves and then get upset when we don't meet them but they were never realistic and we were never going to meet them in the first place and that's not to speak negative of yourself to say you're not capable but if it's not realistic you're not going to meet it and so at the end of the day as you can see uh the character portrayed in the video was literally trying to do way too much. It was just, it was unrealistic. It was not realistic. And so I have found that, I'll say this, I have found that when I set unexpected goals for, not unexpected, unrealistic goals for myself, I have found that a lot of my anxiety and and or depression is linked to this false sense of reality that I am supposed to be doing all of these things and excelling all of these things. And there's never going to be a mistake. There's never going to be um, any balls dropped. And that is very toxic and it's not healthy because at the end of the day, you have to be real with where you are and what season you're in, right? So for me, my example, because I can't speak for everybody, but for me, I am currently an entrepreneur. I work for myself. I don't work for anybody but Tamara. Um, and I work for the Lord. Anyway, <laughs> I work for myself. Um, I'm also a mother of three, a new mother of three. So I have two children. Now I have three, one of which is still considered at the infancy stage. So he is four months old. He's a new baby. We are still trying to figure that schedule out. I'm also a leader in my ministry. So I run um, an auxiliary within my ministry. Then I'm also a mom, a wife. I also am on this platform. I'm, I run a YouTube channel. I run, actually I'm a part of three YouTube channels. And so in that, I have to set goals that are realistic for my family. Not you eating my finger while I'm talking. Is it delicious? Okay. Good thing I just washed my hand. Okay. Anyway, y'all. So, um, I said that to say, in life, I have to sit down and say, okay, Tamara, 
you might not be able to do all the things that you had set for this year, not because you're not capable, but because you're going to burn yourself out. Um, you are not going to have balance in the things that you're doing. So for me, there are a lot of things that I want to do. I wanted, wanted to do some traveling this year. It's probably not going to happen. Well, let's think about why. Okay. Some of the traveling I want to do with my family, it's probably not going to happen because number one, we have three kids now and it's very expensive to fly. Even though he's free, it's still expensive to fly. And then I have to think about the fact that all the different sicknesses right now that are going around, I have to think about that. Now, if I would have set that goal and say in 2024, I want to be in Aruba. I want to go this place and that place. It's not going to happen. And it's not because I don't want it to. It's not because, oh, I just can't. I could force it to happen. But then think about the responses that's going to come from that. Right. If my child ends up getting sick while I'm in the airport because we come in contact with someone who's sick, that's going to weigh on me heavy. If we go out of town and, you know, one of our kids um, ends up getting sick while we're out of town or if I think about the fact that, OK, yeah, we just spent X amount of dollars, six thousand dollars to go on a trip and then our car breaks down. We have to think about all those things. We're in a season of life now where we're, we're looking to purchase a home. We're looking to purchase a new vehicle. We have to consider all of those things. And I'm being so transparent with you to, to say, what things do you, what goals do you have set for yourself? Do those goals align? If a goal, if one of our goals as a family is to purchase a home and to purchase a car, and then we also have goals to travel, we got to balance that out and say, hmm. We may have to put the traveling goal to, to the following year because this year we're working actively on this goal. They don't align with each other, right? But if I have a goal that said that says I want to start juicing and I want to start um, prepping my meals ahead of time because I found that um, because of my new dietary restrictions, it's very difficult for me to find on-the-go fast food. I have to start prepping ahead of time. If that's one of my goals, but the other goal is for me to live a healthier lifestyle and or lose weight or whatever it is, those goals align, right? If I have a goal um, that I want my children to have a more regular scheduled bedroom, bedtime routine, right? And then another, another goal is that we want to start doing devotions with our kids. Those goals align because guess what? I, we can do devotion right before they go to bed and set that up at a time to say, okay, at 8.30, we're doing devotion. By 8.45, they're in the bed. You see how those goals align? And so you have to be realistic with yourself. To set up yourself for failure, you're only going to just continue to disappoint yourself. You're going to continue to disappoint yourself. If you, for This is a perfect example. I was talking to someone and I said, man, I really wanted to start getting back up in the mornings to work out. But the reality is I'm going to continue to disappoint myself because right now I have a little person who is on his own schedule and gets up when he wants to. And so I have to get sleep when I can. And they're right, poo poo, as he continues to eat my fingers. I have to get sleep when I can. I'm going to set myself up for failure every single time because guess what? If my goal is to work out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings, and on Thursday night, he's up because he has an ear infection, God forbid, but he has an ear infection. I'm just giving real, real realistic situations. He has an ear infection. He's up all night. And I set a goal for myself to get up at 6 a.m. to go work out, but I didn't get to bed till 4 because he was up crying all night. That's not realistic. I have to think about that ahead of time and think about things that could take place and say, you know what? I may have to schedule a midday workout for myself when I get off work since I'm working part time. When I get home, make sure he's settled, situated and go get a 30 minute workout in in my living room. Right. Because I can't physically go to the gym. I have a little person. So those types of things you have to sit down and think about for yourself and give yourself grace. And I want to talk on that grace aspect, because sometimes we talk about giving yourself grace, but we don't know what that looks like. Negative self-talk is an area on where we lack grace. When you say things like, oh, girl, you should have been there by now. Oh, look at you. You run late again. Oh, girl, look at you. You done gained all this weight. 
and you still ain't lost no weight. You still sit up here doing this negative talk. Negative self-talk has no room for grace. What does grace look like? Making non-judgmental statements like, man, I didn't get up this morning. So I probably need to figure out another system that's going to help me get up. It's stating the fact. The fact of the matter is, no, you didn't get up like you planned. But the non-judgmental portion of it says, okay, let me figure something else out because clearly this is not working and that is okay. Giving yourself grace requires practice and discipline because at the end of the day, you have to, you are your worst critic and you are your biggest enemy. You get in, in the way of self all the time. People, you hear people say that all the time. I get in the way of me all the time. I'm constantly blocking myself from whatever it is that I'm trying to do. But you also have to be careful on the flip side of that, of giving yourself too much grace. Because if you give yourself too much grace, you'll never reach the goal. So you got to find that balance to say, okay, you know what? This is two days in a row. I didn't get up like I said I was going to. So now I need to I need to cut something out. I need to stop scrolling on social media before I go to bed. And when I say I'm getting into bed at 9 o'clock, at 9 o'clock, my phone should be down and I should be, got my sleep mask on and I'm going to bed. You got to set that those boundaries for yourself. So I just wanted to harp on that and talk about that because it is something I have personally been struggling with. And here on my channel, I'm going to make you laugh, but I want you to grow. Hence, laugh and grow with Tam. Let's laugh about it. Let's talk about it. Let's laugh about some of the ridiculous things that we do to ourselves and or that we are involved in and we see. But let's also grow from it. Let's grow from it. So I appreciate you all for jumping in, watching this video with me. Thank y'all for your support. Thank you all for being here. I love y'all so, so much. Thank y'all for rocking with me on this transition in my channel as I continue to be obedient to God concerning the content on my channel. I love y'all so, so much. And baby boy, you can say bye-bye. Are you going to say bye this time? Kyla. Are you going to say bye? Yes? Okay. What about now? Bye-bye. You say bye-bye? Hot pumpkin. <laughs> say bye-bye. Okay. And on that note, we will see y'all in the next video. Bye, guys. Say bye-bye.